Hello and a very warm welcome to this Hive 2 tutorial series. Um, this episode, the eighth episode, is about the arpeggiator and the sequencer of Hive 2. And I want to show you um, what options there are and how you can use it. But let's get started. So uh, this is the Hive 2 synthesizer in Bitwig. And let's uh, increase the size of it a little bit. And I want to have the sustain over here right now. And configure that on the fly. So the um, arpeggiator and the sequencer of Hive 2 is in this hexagon over here. And it consists mainly of, let's say, three parts. One is the time base over here. The other one is the arpeggiator, the ARP. And the third one is the sequencer over here. And to um, hear something from this whole thing is I have to turn on, for example, the ARP. So normally you will only would hear that. And if I turn on the ARP, and press one key, you hear that. So let's start with the time base. The first option time base is here the sync button and it's turned off. And uh, that means that it's synced to the host um, speed, the host uh, BPM speed. You can turn that off and the manual um, explains that if it's turned off, it's not uh, there is strict um, bent to the um, host speed, but I didn't manage to get it out of speed from the host. So maybe if you have an idea how to not sync it with the host, um, just tell me because I didn't manage that to do that. And it would be very interesting but because maybe there are some um, nice effects hidden by not syncing that to the host BPM. I would like to try that out, but I don't know how. So maybe just yeah, tell me, write it to the comments. Okay, then the next option is time base. And time base is the the speed. So there are different speeds from uh, 32 to a quarter. So that's very fast. And you can switch that with the mouse wheel or just click on that. For example, then there is the multiply. And the multiply option is... Um, uh, to seamlessly change the speed of the time base. So if I put it down, it's on 50% and I put it up over here, it's on 200%. Double click, it's 100%. So let's listen to it. Okay, and that's the speed uh, of the multiply. Then there's the swing um, button and let's go to a very slow tempo. And there you can dial in the swing. If you go a little bit faster, Okay, that's these options from the time base. And this is um, always the base because that's it's called time base for the arpeggiator and the sequencer. So the arpeggiator has um, F, um, has different options. And one of them, the most popular one is uh, um, the octave. So if I uh, hold down a chord, just use a little faster 16s. And I, if I uh, change the octaves, you can change up to four octaves. Okay, and 
And then there is the clock divider and the clock divider is something that you can divide the speed from the time base to a half, quarter, eighth speed or sixteenth speed. So it's getting um, with every divider, it, it's getting slower. The reason behind that is that you can set the arpeggiator to a different speed than the sequencer, but they're still in sync. So that's why those numbers are there. So um, divide uh, with 2, 4, 8 or 16. Then there's the direction. And as you heard, um, the direction is up. So I put here on two octaves. <laughs> Then there is a plate direction, so um, the um, order in which you press the keys is important. So let's go a bit slower. And I press four keys in different order. Now I do up. I do down. And now something. Okay, then we had the up. Wait. Then there is the down. Then there is the up and down. So it goes up and down, as it says, and then there is the up and down two, and with the up and down two, every uh, low note is played twice, and every high note is placed twice, uh, played twice. Okay, and then there's a random, and random means everything goes random. I think you get it. So let's put that again on up because this is, I think, the most easiest way to understand the next um, parameters. And one is the order. And the order has four um, other options, the serial, the round, the leap, and the repeat. And with the order, there's um, uh, sometimes on, on some of those, you have to put the octaves on more than two octaves. So three or four so that you can hear difference because it sometimes makes only difference with more than two octaves so i go down in my chord again and this is the serial as you heard it already so it just plays the chord and goes the next um, um, octave and so on and so forth then there's the round So it goes up like the series and um, then it goes down again, but every octave like beginning from the from the lowest note to the highest and jumping down another octave from the lowest to the highest. This is in the direction up. And sure, it uh, behaves a little bit different if you go down. And so on and so forth. So the combination makes the difference here. So and then there is the leap. So it plays always the lowest note and um, all four octaves and then the second note all four octaves and so on and then you have the repeat. This repeat jumps also through the different octaves. So let's go to serial again. And then the last option is the restart option. And the restart option is where you can say, okay, I'm pressing down three notes and it plays all my um, my arpeggio. But that may be... Oh. 
three octaves. But now you can say, okay, after four notes, just start over from the beginning or every five notes or six notes. So you, you're breaking up the arpeggiator and I will change it while it is playing so you recognize it more easily. So it, it could be a um, far more interesting pattern than just repeating uh, the arpeggiator all over again. Okay, then let's come to the sequencer. And the sequencer has um, um, four modes. The one is off, so nothing happens. Then there is mod, the play mod, and the recording mod. <clears throat> We're starting with the mod mode. <laughs> And with mod mode, the lights are going on here, but only for this uh, for the last um, column here, or row. It's a row. It's not a column. And um, so the only values that are uh, taken are from the mod um, row, and um, this mod row is just for modifying some. Um, values that you dial in and there are um, several ways of doing that one is you have the mod CC over here that doesn't have any uh, any parameter right now uh, but you can choose a parameter from this um, menu for the control A the control B mod wheel pitch wheel and the pressure let's take the pitch wheel because that's the most obvious and if you use the pitch wheel you have to go over here and see, okay, pitch wheel, you have two semitones. I will take and hold octave, so 12 semitones, like over here. And as soon I play here, this is a percentage. Like this one. And there is another option like steps. And with steps, I dial in how many steps from the 16th there should be used. I click on that and say, okay, I want to be, have four steps. So this is this, and I use the mouse wheel. Something like this. So, and. Um, so I could, you could use more steps, like oh, the whole 16, maybe 8, maybe 12, maybe, for example, 5. It just uses that. And then there is the shift parameter. And with the shift parameter, you can shift those values to the right or to the left with those arrows. And um, this is not only shifting, it's rotating. That means if you just watch that 36 and the rest as well for sure if i click on the right button it shifts it to the right and everything shifts to the right as well so i shift it further to the fifth step and if i shift it further to the right it uh, comes here in the, on the left side again in so it rotates like on a on a ball on a round i don't know it rotates all around so it doesn't fall apart <laughs> like this i can shift that all uh, all over so if i dialed in some values and i want to put it on a different step i can just shift it so and then there is another um, way using this modulation values you you could use it with a mod cc to a specific of one of those um, values but there's always um, also um, in the matrix a value that is called um, sequencer mod and there's all also a sequencer gate i will um, uh, show you that in a minute and the sequencer mod is just a modulation source where you can just modulate something like maybe this, I don't know. Or you modulate the release time. Example. Like this. 
maybe not the best example, <laughs> but um, this should be sufficient for right now. So, isn't unassigned. Okay. Okay, so this is the modulation uh, mode of the sequencer. If I put it here on play mode, you see all the lights are going up. So you have these um, rows gate transpose velocity and the modulation matrix as well and you have oh, uh, uh, here the sequencer preset where you can click on it and for example init everything so everything is reset it to nothing or i could uh, load another patch for example so there are predefined settings in here or I could save my settings or copy those settings or everything you want to do with your preset. Okay, but if I go now on this um, play mode, you see there are eight steps selected. So it goes through over here and there's the gate. And with the gate, there are three options like this one, the filled uh, circle. If I click on this circle, it gets a roof and then it's like legato. A little bit slower. And if I click on that again, it is um, the circle is just a circle and not a filled circle. And it's omitted on this step. Like this and with this gate percentage uh, knob I could I can define how long the node is so if you just I put that back on normal setting like in it it gets shorter over here and here it gets longer And then you have attack and decay over here and attack and decay um, referring to the gate, but it's referring to the modulation over here, the um, sequencer gate uh, modulations. And maybe let me put that a little bit less so I could reach everything I want to do. So now I selected the sequence gate and modulate, for example, the cutoff and modulate the resonance, for example, like uh, this. So cutoff, I'm closing the cutoff and putting on the resonance, maybe like that, okay. And um, put it on very slow. So now you see the sequencer is running and it's doing this movement all the time because I dialed in this um, modulation. So now I can use attack and decay just to slow down this movement, just a slower attack. and a slower decay. Maybe I slow down the tempo of my host. It's more obvious. That like down. Attack. It's like a slide. Like that, for example. So there you can um, put, a, put an envelope on the gate, how fast or how slow it works. I'll put it back on M or something. Okay.
So these are the sequencer gate and the sequencer mod values. And for sure you could um, dial in. Let's do that again. So like this. You can use um, all the other values like transpose. Transpose the step. Come on. Maybe I should remove the modulation over here so you get a like this and then you can set the velocity over here but you should use the velocity like that And with dynamic velocity on, you could uh, uh, you can put like um, a relative velocity on the sequencer. So if it is off and velocity is set on here, you just use the velocity that is dialed in here. And uh, regardless how hard or soft you press the key, it's always the same loudness volume. So if I put dynamic over here and then press the key soft soft if I press it hard it's like that so you can you could uh, use that um, while playing or while arranging um, and play with the, the different dynamic uh, velocity levels okay that's um, everything about the play mode and then at least there is the um, recording mode and with the recording mode um, you can record your steps step by step it's a step recording i init this patch again put it on record so everything is uh, resetted over here and now i can um, press uh, the keys with velocity and pitch Now I recorded everything with um, velocity and the pitch, a transpose. And if I go now over here and press one key, it's playing that that I played in and I think it's horrible. So it's like that. So, um, I hope you liked that video. I hope um, you, you've learned something and you could use it for yourself, for your production, for your music, for your live performances. Um, the one thing with this uh, sync button, I would really like to know um, <laughs> how, you can, how you can use that. And I would like to ask you a kind favor, um, for example, like this. That would help the channel a little bit. And um, yeah, as always, um, comment, like, subscribe, share the videos. It would help me very much. And I would love it and would love to hear from you. And I hope I see you in the next or in some other videos as well. I'm doing as well a lot of Bitwig videos and other stuff. And um, yeah, stay healthy. See you soon. Ciao, ciao.